contact tracing. So far, there are 229 teams all around the country and in all counties. The National Response and Contact Tracing Team is currently conducting training for those teams on the usage of the web-based tool and data management. One of the biggest challenges is logistics support, including transport for the county and some county teams. Ladies and gentlemen, today, as we continue the fight, I'm delighted that the contact tracing team is receiving a major boost from our development partners. It is my pleasure to preside the handover ceremony and distribution of rapid response vehicles to various counties. These vehicles have been procured by the COVID-19 Health Emergency Response Project in my ministry at a cost of some 200 million shillings. Transport has been one of the key challenges identified, especially in accessing the rural areas as the government works at providing quality health care. These vehicles, to be handed over to 13 counties, will boost capacity in contact tracing and surveillance as we work to curtail the spread of the virus in the country. The counties identified to benefit from this support include Nairobi, which will get some two vehicles, one for Kenyatta National Hospital and the other for the newly reformed Nairobi Metropolitan Services. Others are Mombasa, Kiambu, Kajiado, Machakos, Nyeri, Migori, Busia, Uasingishu, Nakuru, Taita Taveta, Eogeo Marakwet, and Kissing. The overall project and the outcomes are designed to assist counties to prevent, detect, and respond to the threat posed by COVID-19. And then to strengthen the national system for public health preparedness and responsiveness. The project was selected for COVID-19 financing because of the strategic place Kenya holds when it comes to global connectivity and travel and the risks posed. The project is provided through the World Bank Group Fast Track Facility as part of the global COVID-19 multi-phase program approach. Swift detection of an outbreak, assessment of its epidemic potential, and rapid emergency response can reduce avoidable mortality and morbidity, reduce the economic, social, and security impacts. Failure in the rapid mobilization of financing and coordination of response results in unnecessary casualties and significant socio-economic consequences. By focusing on the containment, diagnosis, and treatment of patients, the proposed project seeks to control the disease outbreak and limit the socio-economic losses. Critical interventions are needed to reduce morbidity and mortality rates from existing and emerging infections, curtail the outbreak of COVID-19, and mitigate the social impacts of the outbreak. The development of the National COVID-19 Preparedness and Response Plan includes strengthening of public health emergency operation center for the effective, effective efficient emergency response for multiple hazards strengthening surveillance and information systems. It also aims at increasing laboratory capacity, improving infection and prevention control, as well as case management, improve disease surveillance and emergency response in the country. Turning to COVID-19 statistics today, we had a challenge with our server because of power outages. 
But nonetheless, we still managed to uh, test some uh, 1,205 samples, out of which 189 people have tested positive in the last 24 hours. Thus, we have now 10,294 people who have now tested positive in the country. This pushes our cumulative figures to 216,242. 106 of those are male when 83 are female. Or the youngest is five and the oldest is 71. Nairobi continues to have the higher figures, recording 147, Kiambu at 20, Mashakos 11, Kajiado 5, Mombasa 2. Obviously, because of the uh, challenges that we had, it means that we are holding samples that we have not tested in the last uh, 24 hours. And uh, these things happen. As you will remember, yesterday we, we had the highest figure at over 7,000 um, uh, tests. The distribution of these cases in terms of sub-counties, especially for Nairobi, are that Dagoretti North, Dagoretti North, has 77 cases. Embakasi has, Embakasi East has 10, Madaraka has 10, Embakasi South has 9, Kebra has 9, Embakasi West 6, Langata 4, Kamukunji and Kasarani all have recorded cases. And in Kiambu, the 20 cases come from Kikuyu, uh, and two cases, Mashakos have, have 11, mainly in the Earth River area, and in fact in a place as far as Masinga has now recorded cases. Katundu South, Gidongori, Juja, Rimuru have all got a case now. In Kajiado, Kajiado North has uh, four cases. At the same time, I'm glad to inform you that 65 patients have been discharged from our various hospitals, bringing the total to close to 3,000 at 2,946, the number of recoveries in the country so far. However, today, I'm also saddened to inform you that we have lost one of the higher numbers. At 12, 12 patients have died as a result of uh, COVID-19. All the 12 are here in Nairobi. Three of the cases actually died at home. Um, and the rest of them are in the various hospitals, which tells you, ladies and gentlemen, that um, the, the, the people being affected are more as expected. Um, as you can see, the patient's age is across the board. And all these deaths are from a, a century community-based deaths. And this is, the number, this is the highest number of fatalities that we have um, recorded in a single day. That is not good news. And uh, our condolences go to the families of those uh, who, have been, who have lost loved ones. Finally, I would like to now hand over the vehicles that um, we have been given. But before I do so, that we, have, that we are giving away, sorry. But before I do so, uh, let me pose for one or two questions. So, because when we do, we will not be uh, coming back. Yes. Thank you. I am Mark Namasa from KTN News. On Friday, we did a spot check at uh, Mbagavi and Kemri. We were told that if you wanted to walk in and get tested, you go to KNH and pay 5,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. My question is, what about people who cannot afford that amount? Because we found a family of seven, and they said they had uh, been in contact with a positive case, and they all needed to be tested. We followed them to KNH. They were also told the same thing, because we also posed as uh, prospective people who needed to be tested. So seven times 5,000, that was 35,000. They didn't have that amount. What happens to the rest of the Kenyans who can't afford that? OK. Hi, 
Hello, my name is Winnie Somolo from NTV. I have two questions. The first one is um, the attitude among Kenyans is still, they're still in denial that we have uh, COVID-19 in the country. As much as today we've registered the highest number, the 12. So does this mean that the government has not reached or what effort has the government put to ensure that Kenyans are brought into the reality that COVID-19 is here? Then the second question is in regards to uh, in a week's time, we've had over 2,000 increase in the number of cases in the country. Did the government gamble with Kenyan's lives by uh, opening up most of these um, amenities? Thank you. My name is Dorcas Sungera from Citizen TV. This morning we have established that 22 nurses have tested positive in Pumwani Maternity Hospital, and they say one of the grievances is that they have not been given adequate and quality PPEs. What is the ministry's next cause of action? And my second question is, now we are seeing more cases. Is there a likelihood of more mass testing drives, particularly in Nairobi, as it was before? For no. anyone? Uh, thank you. My name is Muhammad Ali from TV47. Uh, the numbers keep rising af even after the ban of the cessation of movement. Is this an indication of more and more uh, infections? Uh, secondly, there have been a lot of complaints and concerns about capacities in counties. Is it a concern to you as a ministry? And lastly, what is your projection on the numbers moving forward? Uh, we had some projections some times back, but uh, where do we stand at the moment? Thank you. Uh, Santa Sana, thank you very much. Uh, let me start uh, with the last one. Whether the numbers rising is uh, a sign of uh, more and more infections. Th that is actually what it is. It is actually more infections. Th that's why we are reporting them. It's, it's, um, it's higher and it's expected. As we said earlier, a more than a month ago, we took a month, a month ago when people are saying Kenyans were demanding that we open uh, the place up and we seize cessation of movement a month ago. We said no, because we wanted to have two things happen. One of them is county preparedness, and the other one, one of them is uh, county preparedness, and the other one has to do with education of people, education of Kenyans, so that uh, they understand the implication of what is going on, what they must do in order to protect themselves. Because the question is, if you lock up another one month and another one month, what is the additional asset you are adding, you are, you are adding to the country? Is another month and another month going to make Kenyans more and more aware? Which Kenyan is not aware now, who is going to be more aware in another 30 days? And I would like to imagine that there is a limit, there is a time that comes and we said it, and we said we are going to have more increase, we are going to have increased cases, particularly if we, take, if we don't take personal responsibility and protect ourselves. Um, I had a question, I think it's Dokas who spoke about um, uh, PPEs. We have got more, more PPEs at the moment that we need. So it's a question of individual hospitals and individual units ensuring that um, they have got them. We have not received any information from the Nairobi uh, management, the hospitals in Nairobi, that is the first time I have ever heard of anybody saying that there is a hospital in Nairobi that doesn't have PPEs. Even this door here has PPEs. So there is no issue, as far as we are concerned, of the uh, PPEs lacking. We have got more than enough of PPEs. Um, there is the issue of the um, uh, KT, uh, the, the denial of Kenyans, that Kenyans have, are in denial, there is a disease. I don't know which Kenyans you have been talking to, but uh, most Kenyans are not in denial. Those who are in denial, there is nothing you and I can do about. You cannot do that they understand that there is a disease. You cannot put them to prison so that they understand that there is a disease. They, they, you know, I mean, there was AIDS, and we told Kenyans that there is AIDS. And people are told there is AIDS, and you can die of AIDS. And the government was at the forefront of informing everybody that there is AIDS. And we will continue, even now as a Ministry of Health, informing you that there is AIDS, and it can kill you. But as you well know, it got to the point where it is left to individual 
responsibility to deal with this. Now, the information is this. There is COVID-19. Even a little kid in the streets of Nairobi is now singing that they can get it. And you can get it. And we can all get it. Even small children. You listen. They'll be telling you. Who are those other people who we are now told don't know that there is COVID-19? And how long do you think it will take for them to actually know that there is a COVID-19? So uh, as far as I'm concerned, if somebody is, denial, is in denial, there, there is not very much that you can do. One of these days, that denial will disappear very fast. Because even some of the ones that we have been told, even nations, even countries have told us that they are in denial, that there is a COVID-19. There are some countries that actually declared there was nothing like COVID-19. But very big people there died of COVID-19. If you go to the same places now, nobody is in denial. So we don't want to have a situation where it is only after we die that we cease to be in denial. I think you can help them. The media, and I like the expose that was done by one of the papers today, almost five, six pages of explaining to people, this is what you do when you go there, this is what you do when you go to the other place, you know, and you are told the disease is here. We have even gone further, and, and be, we have been brutally honest. In fact, we are being accused, of, to, we are being told to soften a little bit, not to tell people that if you are in, uh, in his uh, county, you cannot be flown into Nairobi. <laughs> The truth of the matter is that you cannot be thrown into Nairobi. Not because we don't want you to come to Nairobi. We would love for you to come to Nairobi. But we are telling you that there is a high possibility that by the time you are thinking of coming to Nairobi, there will probably be no beds in Nairobi because of the number of cases that will be there. And this is something we are borrowing from what we have seen in most of the other countries on earth including today's figures as we read about, uh, if you watch CNN and other media, what is happening in the United States. So it, we, it is it's a question of preempting this situation. What we are being is preemptive and looking at people and informing them this is what is likely to happen. And when you say that, then obviously there are those who will be in denial, there are those who will misinterpret to say that we have been overrun, we have been overcome. But we simply are telling people the truth. And I think, as we said earlier, the truth will set you free. Um, I am very saddened about uh, Mark, about the experience that uh, you had. And I can only really apologize to those uh, families that went through that experience, because we have made it very clear that that is not what should happen. I have seen uh, the CEO of Kenyatta National Hospital here. Uh, I think he's here. Is Evans here? Yes, Evans is here. So you respond to that, to the issue of whether people are seized away and why he is here. You respond for himself. Isn't that only fair? It's fair and just. Don't you think so? Yes. Yeah, so so um, I'll give him a chance to respond to that one. And as far as uh, the testing is concerned, I'll also ask Dr. Kuria uh, to respond to that matter of uh, testing. Um, but I, 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 I cannot emphasize more, I cannot say more, that responsibility is not with the government. Responsibility is at the individual level. And I like what I'm seeing with uh, our spiritual, our spiritual uh, community. There are mosques and churches that are simply saying that we are not ready yet, just hold on. That is what is called responsibility. Because if you feel you are not ready, don't do it. So if you are not going to wear a mask, and you are not going to keep your distance, stay at home. Maybe that is how you save yourself. So please, do not try and transfer. Don't try and transfer irresponsibility or irresponsible behavior back to government responsibility. That is not right, and it is not fair. May I ask uh, Dr. Kamuri to respond to the issues asked about? Uh, thank you, Waziri. Um, 
Uh, I don't know what uh, the question was, uh, whether we are still testing in Bagadi. The answer is yes, but who are we testing? After we, we have opened up, we have left Bagadi specifically for the sick. Initially, we had separated Bagadi to have both um, the suspects and the sick. At the moment, we have only identified Bagadi now specifically only for the confirmed cases. And as Waziri said last week, the counties have been equipped with systems how they can um, uh, sort out the patients within the county. We only want to leave Bagadi for the, the very sick, and that's why we have stopped the process of triaging within Bagadi, because we don't want to expose most people, especially who are coming suspects. We are still doing some testing at Kenyatta next to a clinic called Clinic 66, but we are still also preferring to test the symptomatic. We don't want the, the numbers, we don't want people to come to the hospital. The ones who are in the county, we are having a county process. We want the ones in the hospital to be left only for, for the sick, because when we mix the, no, the, the healthy or the symptomatic and asymptomatic, the exposure becomes more, and that's why we have changed that uh, system, Waziri. About the charges, we, when you are picked from the county, we are still charging a thousand, but we had put a program for, for hoteliers. That's what we were charging the charges we said. I think, I think, uh, I think Mark, to, to be fair to Mark, the question has not yet been uh, responded to. I think the, the correct position is this. When we pick people, particularly when we are doing uh, targeted testing, we don't charge anything. All right. We, in, when we are doing surveillances and when we are doing those kind of uh, situations, when we go around doing mass testing and mass, mass testing identified as targeted mass testing, we do not charge anything. However, as uh, Daktari is correctly saying, we, we are not doing testing for everybody. You know, we don't just go to the streets and start testing around. We test because there is some reason why that area, you know, should be focused and tested. As uh, Dr. Amos explained, I think it was last week, testing is very expensive. And we don't, we don't just, just for the sake of uh, testing as a government. There are private labs that are testing, and we have urged them that 5,000 shillings is way too much money, you know, to test, uh, to, to charge people uh, on, on, on testing. So the, the, the truth of the matter is that uh, we are not charging ourselves. 1,000 shillings is when people go to those government hospitals and present themselves not because uh, they have been identified as sick but because they, for whatever reason they feel that they should be tested but um, the government hospitals we are, we are not charging anything like 5,000 shillings that's not that's not that is not us um, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Kuria to respond to some of the testing issues thank you very much uh, CS I think you have answered the question very well, sir. And I would link this to one of the questions that had been asked about attitude. And I was reading somewhere on the social media where someone was asking where the 3,000 figures that we are announcing are coming from. It comes at an important time when we are launching these vehicles for contact tracing and surveillance. And the answer is that those that we are testing are coming mainly from our surveillance efforts the contact tracing and responding to alerts. And that is what these vehicles are going to be responding to, alerts. Those that are jumping from hospital to hospital, seeking testing, we know there is a clamor for everyone to get tested because it is wrong that the attitude is not there. Kenyans are actually scared now, and everyone is seeking to be tested. But the way they are seeking to be tested is also wrong because our testing strategy, on the other hand, is different. It is not asking everyone, let me test you, or that anyone comes, I want a test. We cannot afford that. CS has just said it's fair and expensive exercise. So we have drawn out a new strategy, according to targeted, for more focused targeted testing, and it's go more, going to be more syndromic. We are starting mainly with those who are symptomatic, and this will be coming from the alerts that we are receiving from the communities. And at the time that the alerts are sent, then we send rapid response teams to where the individual is. 
So we don't want individuals jumping from homes to every other hospital. We are spreading the infection even further. And even those who are following those seven, those who are, you, are, you are establishing yourselves as contacts already. So we want those that have symptoms to call the same number, 719, and a rapid response will be, be coming to you and will be tested from site. And as the CS has said here, that testing is free. So those who are jumping, looking for testing in Kenyatta and Beach Church 5000, they should have called the RRT team, the rapid response teams. Testing was going to be free. We are also focusing, of course, on healthcare workers. And again, for the healthcare workers, we want to focus mainly on those who are symptomatic. While we are doing contact tracing, we follow up those that have had contacts with those suspected cases and contacts with the healthcare workers. Again, we are prioritizing this for our testing. So our testing strategy, which is being rolled out as we speak, has clear details and priorities of who we are testing. Where mass testing comes in is when we establish that a certain locality is establishing itself as a cluster of positive cases. Now we want to go and test with people there. Most of those have symptoms and close contacts, and if possible, then ring fence that area to contain that infection. So we have clear strategies and clear reasons for testing, and uh, it is not that is not to be charged. Hope that answers you. Thank you. May I just please follow up on Pumani Maternity Hospital, the sure. crisis. Will it be closed or not now that 22 nurses have tested positive for COVID-19? The situation will be assessed by the medics. And uh, so far, if we have been able to isolate, I know that we have been able to isolate everybody. I know there is mass testing that has happened in the entire hospital. I think yesterday we isolated two more, yesterday. So if we are confident that um, the hospital is clean, and we don't have the same situation, then it is not necessary to close the hospital. But of course, the safety of people, and the safety particularly of children and infants in the hospital, will be paramount and number one concern. Uh, before we uh, proceed to uh, the vehicles, I would like to ask uh, Governor Tolgos to uh, say something on behalf perhaps of the other governors who are not here. Uh, thank you, uh, CS and PS, uh, members of the press. I want to uh, take this opportunity on behalf of uh, all the 47 counties to first of all appreciate uh, Minister of Health for the support that they've been giving us uh, on this COVID issue. And uh, CS, I want to also uh, take this time to clear the air because I've been reading a lot of uh, information that counties are not prepared. Last week, there are a number of counties that they indicated that they don't have ventilators, they don't have ICU beds, and uh, El Geo Maracuet was among the least. And I want to confirm today, uh, Buenasias, that in El Geo Maracuet we have five ICU beds in our isolation center, and we are setting up additional three. We have a total number of uh, 11 uh, ventilators. And to just tell the members of the press that they need to visit counties and verify before uh, writing or uh, reporting to the public that counties are not prepared. Again, I think uh, all the support that we re received from the ministry, we want to appreciate. The PPEs, as you've mentioned, I want to confirm that uh, we've received PPEs, and uh, whenever we request, we get them. So I want to uh, confirm that. And also on the issue of uh, uh, testing, I think uh, to just confirm that uh, one time there's a young man in my county who called the uh, uh, emergency line and indicated that he was from Mombasa, he came to Nairobi, and went to El Geo Maracuet, which was a lie, of course, but the team, uh, look for him, the county response team uh, comprising of the county government and the national government, he was picked and taken to quarantine and he was tested free of charge. So I want to confirm that. Maybe the only thing, uh, Buenasias, uh, where we still receive a lot of complaints are the hotel owners because the charges are still high, but I am sure that will be sorted out. So for me, uh, on behalf of the Council of Governors, uh, want to appreciate and especially for the uh, surveillance vehicles that we are receiving today 
and to still request uh, Buana CS that uh, 13 counties are receiving. And I know we all uh, need the support. So when you get more vehicles, please consider the remaining counties. But for now, I want to appreciate and uh, to request that we continue working together and to assure the media uh, to inform the members of public that counties are ready. Even now, uh, if a case happens in any county, those cases will be dealt at the county level. There will be no um, uh, referrals to Nairobi or any other hospital. We will deal with them at the county level. So thank you so much and really appreciate the support. Santi.